dilations in geometry. This is an introductory video. Here's a diagram and some important terms. One of the most important things that you will notice in most problems is the first two items on this vocabulary list. Center of dilation and scale factor determine everything about the dilation. So the center of dilation is kind of like a light bulb that projects forward towards the figures. If it's an enlargement, these lines will go past the original figure and create a bigger figure. If it's a reduction, these lines will intercept a smaller figure on the way to the larger figure. So that's the center of dilation. And sometimes it's right inside the figures or it can be outside like this one, it can be anywhere. The scale factor is how many times larger or smaller the sides of the new figure are compared to the previous figure. So we've done things like this before, where you take the dilated figure, here's one measurement and it corresponds to this measurement. And if you take eight over four, that's the new measurement over the old measurement, you get two, that's the scale factor. Okay, and you could use any linear measurement on this drawing. It can either be the sides of the figure or it could be the altitudes of the figure because those are linear measurements. Those correspond in a two to one ratio also. And even the distance from the center out to any vertex. And if you make right triangles out of those, even the legs of the right triangles, let's see if I compare this one here, this, these two sides compared with these two sides. Okay, those are linear measurements also. All the linear measurements in the picture compare at two to one. Now the areas would be different and you know how to figure that out because we've done that before. The dilated figure is similar, so it makes similar figures. The sides are all proportional. We have terms called pre-image and image. The pre-image is the original figure and the image is the dilated figure. Now notice I'm saying dilated. A lot of people mispronounce this as dilated and there is no A after the I, so it isn't really pronounced that way. When you go to an eye doctor and you have your pupils dilated, it is based on this principle. The circles that are your pupils will enlarge uh, with chemical drops and that opens the window into your eye so the doctor can get a better glimpse of the health of the interior of your eye. So we say that your pupils are dilated. Uh, the last two things on here are terminology. When you hear this phrase, A prime, what someone is reading is something that looks like this. Now in these two figures, the original is called ABC and the second figure is DEF. And I can tell that the second figure is the bigger one because ABC comes first in the alphabet, so that's the first figure. That's one way to label points for dilations. Another really common way is instead of D, if we called it A prime, it's kind of like the alternate A. So you have A and A prime. And similarly, we could call this one B prime and we could call this one C prime. So that's what we mean by the words A prime. We don't write out the word prime, but that's how you say this little symbol that looks like a single quote, okay? And finally, this terminology means that it's a dilation. The D stands for dilation and the K is the scale factor. So normally it's a number. Let's try a couple examples. Now, the center for a lot of problems is going to be zero, zero. And I have two other videos. One has everything centered at zero, zero. And the last video is things that are not centered at zero, zero. That's going to affect how you use the scale factor to predict the ordered pairs at the vertices. Or if you know the ordered pairs at the vertices and you're trying to find the scale factor, where the center is makes a big difference. Okay, so for now, let's keep it simple and we'll put the center at zero, zero. In this case, the question mark is where the scale factor goes. So that's what we're looking for. And we're gonna use corresponding lengths of sides. So when you look at this figure, the easiest sides would be the top edges of both figures because they're horizontal. So they lie right on a blue line and that's just gonna be really easy to calculate. So let's use them. The length of BC is one, two, three, four. And B prime C prime is only two. If you're not sure about that one, observe this. We've got a half of a unit, a whole unit, and another half unit. So altogether that makes two units, right? Now, when you find the scale factor K, 
you're always supposed to put the dilated figures measurements first. So I got to put the two first and that turns into one half because you got to reduce. Notice that the dilated figure is smaller than the other figure. That's because the scale factor is only one half. So it's shrinking all the sides to one half as big. That's one way to calculate scale factor. So you could rewrite this as D one half. Okay, here's another dilated figure, also centered at zero, zero. Now this time, the lengths of the sides are a little trickier to find. You could calculate them if you know the distance formula, which we have not talked about this year in this class, but it's based on Pythagorean theorem. So if you made little right triangles where all the slanty sides were the hypotenuse of some right triangle, you could calculate the sides. But that's not the easy way. There's actually a shortcut that's really amazingly simple. It only works if the center's at zero, zero. So please remember that, this is really important. So if the center's at zero, zero, here's what you can do. Find two corresponding points like, I like the numbers at B and B prime. See these two? Look how easy this is. Basically, you either take the X's or the Y's, it doesn't matter, and you put the dilated coordinate on top of the non-dilated coordinate. So what would that be? Well, B prime has a six for an X coordinate and B had a four. So you put six over four and reduce, turns into three halves, which is like one and a half. So that means every side is one and a half times as large. Look how simple that is. Um, we're done, but we could do it with one other point. Let's just pick something else so that you understand this. How about C and C prime? So we gotta do C prime first. Let's look at the X's. You could use the Y's, it doesn't matter. So I get 1.5 is over one. Anything over one is just itself, right? So that's 1.5, which is the same as three halves. That's the same. And it'll be the same no matter what coordinates you pick. So you just put a corresponding X over X or Y over Y from any point in the figure. See how simple that is? Just remember that only works if the center is zero, zero, because it's actually a shortcut um, that can only work when it's centered at zero, zero. And I'll talk about that more in the third video. So that's just some information to get you started. The next two videos will focus on how to solve problems.